Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. I think it was obviously the the scramble play. I think it was the last one that he got hit on potentially. Uh, it's hard to say, but continued to play the rest of the game and then self-disclosed after the game to our docs and our trainers. Well, so there you go, an explanation. Nobody knew that Trevor Lawrence was going into concussion protocol until about 12.15 last night, at least publicly. Right. Nobody knew, and it was self-reported by Trevor Lawrence, so obviously not identified during the football game. Welcome to Sneakers in Jack's Beach, everybody. Jack's Report Live. Hey, we got to get some positive mojo around here or something. I mean, it's the holidays, Dan. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I don't think anybody knows when he got hurt because when he took that intentional grounding, he got tossed to the ground like a rag doll and his head banged off the turf. So it could have happened there. But if he self-reported, then he started to feel the symptoms come on. So he may not know when exactly it happened either. So nobody, I think, knows for sure when it happened yesterday. But that was just another addendum to a, to a really an unfortunate Sunday night. And the Jags, look, it's, they've had three opportunities against the big-time teams this year. They weren't able to deliver at home, five losses at home. It's... It's a tough road to hoe, but they got to fix things fast. They got there's no rest for the week. Nobody feels sorry for anybody in the NFL, man. Brent Martin, no Dan Hick, and Dewan Smoot will join us in just a couple of moments. Listen, we knew this part of the schedule was going to be really tough when it came out in May. The problem is injuries have also occurred during this stretch, and poor play has also occurred during this stretch, and twice happened in prime time in front of the entire country. Let's talk more about Trevor Lawrence, because you mentioned it. The play you're referring to happened with 2.30 to go in the third quarter. That's right this one. Bang. And that's what everybody sent us. Yeah. But there was no identification from the independent neurologist at the football game and going to the blue tent, anything like that. Concussions are interesting. They right. can occur, and then you realize the symptoms later on or even the next day. I also want to point out that nobody's saying the concussion is the reason why he played poorly. Trevor had his worst game that I could remember. I, he, he did not have a good game last night. It happens. I mean, it's the NFL, man. Baltimore has a great defense. There you see it again. You see him smack his head on the turf. So it was a, it was a tough performance by the offense. One, they only scored seven points. And self-inflicted problems by the Jaguars. Yeah, one more thing about that, notable about that wasn't the play that the Jags think he did get a concussion on it was right. a run play later in the fourth quarter right so there were multiple plays that could have led to the concussion obviously he goes into protocol by more the on way that when you're running the ball that late in the game trevor yeah, slide do for goodness sakes don't take on guys so here we go and this is what you're talking about listen when you're the franchise quarterback and in this league the quarterback has to make big plays down the stretch sure. of the season not these kind of plays dan they missed two field goals uh this sequence was horrendous where they had a negative run play a false start a missed catch by Parker Washington and then the fumble by Trevor and then they set it up at the end of the half and I mean this is just inexcusable to let the half run out with no points yeah we understand what Doug Pearson and the Jaguars were trying to do they hit a big play to Zay Jones they got down to the five yard line they had no timeouts left the clock was ticking it was running out of time they wanted to go for it so they tried to hurry up and get a playoff which was fine you're trying to catch Baltimore a little bit off I got no problem with what they were trying to do the problem was Brent that they then threw the ball inbounds. Parker Washington, the rookie, gets tackled, and the clock runs out, and you get no points. It's time for the game plan, sponsored by EverBank. Advantage you. Make the most of your money at everbank.com slash Jaguars. All right, so I think one of the keys to this football game was to get up early in the game. And the Jags got down three to nothing, but they had chances to get even and then take the lead. Remember, Baltimore's a team that plays well from ahead. A lot of people do, but especially Baltimore. They've led for all but 75 minutes this football season. The entire season. Yeah. And the Jags missed two kicks, Dan, and those were huge because it would have at least given them the lead or at least changed kind of the way the game was played. Well, there's no question. Look, it could have been 12 to 10 at worst at the yeah. end of the half at and least 10 changes, to 9 yeah and that changes the whole complexion of the football game so instead it's 10 to nothing you get behind a little bit you start pressing you start throwing the ball maybe a little bit too much you get away from using one of your best weapons at etn and it just kind of fell apart in the second half and the jags weren't able to win look at the possessions this is very unusual okay 10 possessions against the Ravens, which means they're limited in general. All right. Three punts, yep. a couple of fumbles, two missed field goals. They did get the big play touchdown. We'll show a little bit later. But this is the part I want everybody to understand. They had the ball five times in Ravens territory, yeah. and they got zero points. Oof. Zero points. Yeah. That is hard to do. And really, when you look at it, 
probably the reason they weren't in it in the fourth quarter. All right, we had to get all that offensive stuff out of the way. That was left for us to be critical. Now we bring in Dewan Smoot from the defensive side of the ball, and he's happy to be with us. Yeah. I can tell you this. You're happy to be with us because you're not chasing Lamar Jackson anymore, at least tonight. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's a great thing. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be with you guys for sure. Yeah, he, uh, listen, I thought the defense played particularly well. I know the Ravens came in on a roll. They were averaging more than 30 points a game over the last seven games. You held them down to 23. The guy's a special player, man. I mean, you chased him all over the field last night. I, I was watching you particularly, and uh, the one where he threw it kind of up for grabs, I mean, you had him. You had, at least you got to hit him at the end of that play. <laughs> yeah, he's a slippery guy. I mean, you got, you, got to, you got to have relentless effort when you're trying to chase him around, and we definitely, we definitely tried a bunch of times to get him down la last night. The pressures um, were good, right? You were around yeah, him. We were so around many him all times. game. Yeah. A lot of pressure. A, a lot, lot of pressure, pressure yeah. from him. So I mean, he, I mean, he's one of those guys you just got to chest him up. You got to kind of treat him like a running back. So. Dewan Smoot with us. You've been around here a long time, man. Give us the temperature of today. You know how this city can get around the Jags when it feels good, when it doesn't feel good. And right now, it doesn't feel good outside the building. But where are you guys at inside the building? You're in first place, three to play, but you're slumping right now. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a good place. You know, the temperature, it, it's still good inside the building. I mean, we're, we're in control of our own destiny at this point, you know. And the great thing about it, like, you know, what, what we do as Jaguars, right, right when we got our back against the wall and the pressure's high, we start swinging. So, I mean, there's no, there's no, no pressure. We're not feeling any pressure or anything like that. We just know that we're in control of our own destiny. And, hey, these next three games are must wins. Yeah, they are. And going back to last night and playing against Lamar, obviously – Look, the guy is so talented. What was sort of the game plan against him? Obviously, you guys got great pressure on him. Didn't seem like you blitzed a lot. I mean, I thought you and Josh and Trayvon had a real nice game. I thought that was his best game as a Jaguar. I thought he, he was relentless, I thought, last night. But what was the sort of the game plan going in against the guy? Game plan would just be disrupting, you know, really get in his face, really make sure that, he doesn't, that he's not comfortable in the pocket. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, for Lamar, we have to be able to bring him down. I mean, our, our whole game plan was to be able to contain him mm -hmm. and, you know, take our shots, not, not sit back and wait until he runs around and kind of controls the game. So we just, we just try to hit him as much as possible, try to get in his face and just, just disrupt him. I guess it felt like two different games. The first three quarters were one segment, then the fourth quarter, maybe they wore you down. They got too many opportunities. The game was getting out of reach a little bit. But for those first three quarters, I mean, you guys covered pretty well. You did pressure a bit. Obviously, he's going to get his, right? you got to realize that he's going to get his stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he's Lamar Jackson at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, he was MVP for a reason. So, I mean, we, we, we contained him as much as we could. Uh, the back end, they, they had him shut down. Yeah. I mean, let, let's, let's be honest. And they gave us a lot of time. Russian coverage was definitely there yesterday. And, you know, we're just trying to build, a, build upon that for the next three games. That's amazing as he had. 97 rushing yards last night, but it was a quiet 97, yeah, it didn't feel right? It. it didn't feel like he ripped off any big plays. And I know that one of his, what he's trying to do is stay as healthy as possible because he hasn't been able to finish his last two seasons. So he's trying to stay up. But, I mean, I, I thought you guys contained it. He only threw for, I think, 171 yeah. on the night. So. But at the, at the end, it, it all adds up, and, yeah. and they ran for a bunch in the end. We wanna, Dan was talking about this play, and this kind of sums it up, right? I mean, you, you almost have him. Yeah, hit him. He throws up a prayer, and, look at and they get it instead of you guys. Look oh, at Norton one. Smoot. He ducks <laughs> out of everything. <laughs> but I mean, when you're, when, hey, listen, you make that play. If you go back and watch, you take this shot oh. every time that, yeah. and and they end up coming down with the balls instead. Right. Yeah, like 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 I said before, we were just trying <laughs> to take shots. I mean, we weren't trying to sit back and you know kind of just watch them. And, and we we see that uh, when we watch film, we just watch a lot of guys just kind of sit on blocks and wait till he ran so we 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 decided to take our shots last night you know some of them some of them hit some of them didn't yeah frustrating yeah. player to play against though isn't he yeah call him houdini <laughs> <laughs> a little bit uh, hey there were some big plays in this football game for the jags power play of the week sponsored by ibew local 177 powering jacksonville since 1912 well, Dan mentioned it. There's a big one on the third down from Trayvon Walker. And hey, give us an update on Trayvon. You've seen this over the last two years. He has six sacks now. Looks like he's coming along. Maybe not as fast as some other people would like, but how do you view his play lately? I mean, Trey is progressing. You know, like, he, he, he was the number one pick for a reason. I mean, he's strong, big guy. He, he disrupts every single play. 
I mean, if, if you watch him, you, you see how, how he's gotten better each and every week. So I'm just so proud of you know, seeing all the work that he puts for every single week, you know, making sure that he's doing all the extra work to become a great pass rusher that he is. He's a powerful guy, too, man. He's, he's a big dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a he freaky is. athlete. Yeah. Uh, defense, again, played well. Rayshon Jenkins came through. He had a nice interception last night. He had a great read on the football. So Lamar was trying to create something to make something happen. And Rayshon read it beautifully right here and came and whoop, took the ball and had a nice little return. Again, back in business for the Jags. Yeah, Ray, Rayshon's always been a game wrecker. We, we already know what we have in two. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's... it's it's just great to watch. I mean, it's great to be, yeah. you know, teammates with these guys and, you know, how tenacious they are each and every game. Yeah, Rayshon, by the way, he likes that primetime, doesn't he? Yeah, yes, he <laughs> I does. I mean, he'll go make a play in uh, primetime football. Right, we're just getting warmed up with Dewan Smoot. Remember, we take you all the way until 8 o'clock here on Fox 30. Dewan will join us for another 20 minutes or so. And when we get back, it is a log jam in the AFC South. There's no hiding now. Everybody's 8-6, and six, three games left to go. Control your fate mm. by getting W's. More on that when we come back from Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Jack's Report Live. We're a week away from Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. Action Sports Jack's Jack's Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. At this point, because we can physically, we match up with anybody. Mentally, yeah. Well, that was an interesting comment from Rayshon Jenkins, and uh, that can mean a lot of things. It's not that the team's mentally weak, but the focus every single play. Right. What it takes this time of year to win football games in the National Football League. Still a lot of young players out there. Do they know what that means? i got to find out over the next three weeks. Welcome back to Sneakers here in Jack's Beach. Good to have everybody out. Jags report live on Fox 30. A nice hat right there. Very Dan. nice hat. Yeah, how about that? Brent Martin along with Dan Hicken and Dewan Smoot. And I thought that was a pretty interesting comment from Rayshon Jenkins. I don't think he's trying to throw anybody under the bus. Just a real reality check, right? It's a different mentality this time of year to win football games. Yeah, I mean, you, we have to be on our P's and Q's at the end of the day. I mean, we, we see it, and I'm pretty sure you guys see it as well, too. We can match up with anybody physically. You know, we, we got the guys. We got the talent. We just got to keep we – we, we have to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. At the end of the day. You, you really are do I mean, the last couple, three weeks, man, if you just play a clean football game, you probably have two more wins. Last night would have been a coin flip. It's just the, it's, you know, with all the different things happening during a game, but if you guys take care of what you can control, I think you'll be fine. But, but you got to start doing it. We're running out of time. Yeah, we, we, have to, we have to play great on all phases. We have to make sure we have to minimize all mistakes on each phase, on defense, on offense, you know. We just got to communicate and, you know, Make sure we just minimize as much stakes yeah. as possible. Uh, we'll talk more about this stretch run in a moment, but let's talk more about you coming off the Achilles. You made your way back. Uh, how do you feel now? What been back six weeks or something like that? Five weeks? I don't know what it is. Something yeah. close. But you're probably still getting your legs underneath you, even this late in the season. Maybe a good push here yes. at the end. <laughs> yes, it, it was definitely a long road back. You know, about uh, four or five months of just long recovery. Didn't really get an off season. Just was in the weight room majority of the time, trying to get my leg back. But um, now I'm, I'm just not getting to that year mark. You know, things, things are turning around. I feel like each and every week that I'm out there, you know, I'm getting the feel of it. I'm getting my strength back, getting my balance back, my explosion back, which is huge for a decent lineman. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been great for and sure. And it, it's kind of expected when you have an Achilles, right? I mean, when, when you agreed and decided to come back here, we, you're always going to take a little bit of time, right? I mean, we, we started the year on the pup list and things of that nature, right? I mean, I mean of course, me, me being an athlete, I'm super optimistic. Yeah. Thinking, <laughs> I'm going to come out here, first game, get three sacks, you know, go crazy. So, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely like it's a mental game at the end of the day. I had, to, I had to make sure, you know, I was taking care of the small things and kind of going back to the basics. You I know? think what we really appreciate about you is where you came in in the league and the fact that, every single year of your career, you've gotten better as a football player. And I think that's something to be said. That doesn't happen for a lot of guys. I mean, some guys, you seem to, you have, and I don't know you personally, but you work and improve every single year. And I think that's a testament to what you put into the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I, I pride myself on the hard work that I put into the game. You know, and that's also a testament to the people around me as, as well, too. You know, my, my trainers, you know, my, my, um, my actually athletic, my athletic trainer that trains me during the offseason, Jason right. Smith here, Rise and grind in Orange Park. So I mean, we've been progressing each and every week. You know, we have we have that that staple kind of you know um, 
athletic training, and we just kind of build on build upon that each and every year. I always tell the one smooth story. It, you, know, you were going in your last year, and you were so honest. You said, "Hey, I got to either do it or I'm done." Basically, yeah. and you hit a new level. And it's kept going 23 and a half sacks, one of the all-time leaders in Jags history, one of the most underrated players of the last decade here in Jacksonville. And then you've got another guy that's uh, about ready to break a sack record here in Jacksonville. He's second all-time. How <laughs> well has Josh Allen played this year? You've been with him every step of the way. Yeah, he's, he's played out, his, out of his mind, you know. And the thing that, that he, he's told me this whole time is about how focused he is. You know, he, from the offseason all the way up to now, he's stayed so focused. He's worked so hard and I'm just so proud of him I'm, you know proud to see all the work that he's put for you know kind of finally coming to fruition I mean I mean I mean you just see all the plays he's out there killing it yeah make sure you hang out with him in the offseason after he signs that deal because <laughs> at least take you to dinner <laughs> for sure <laughs> we've got a lot of people on that dinner list for Josh Allen we've already put him there uh, so hey the playoffs do basically start this week you guys were very good in this role a year ago mm. when your backs were against it you had to win you ended up winning out getting in the postseason, making a run. I guess you're in the same spot, right? I mean, for you guys, don't the playoffs actually start Sunday on Christmas Eve? Yeah, definitely. We were talking about that with, with, uh, with Doug earlier today. We're like, this is a playoff week for yeah. us. You know, we, these, these next three games are must wins. So, I mean, like you said, we, we play our best ball when our back is against the wall. You know, it's kind of like kind of we embrace the pressure. So, I mean... I'm, I'm ready, for, ready for Sunday already. We're going <laughs> to eight and six, eight and six, and eight and well, six. We're going to skip right. ahead to the AFC South standings. Let's right. take a look at the standings right now and showcase where everybody sits. And, and hey, this is, <laughs> this is what it is. I know. Uh, the Browns are interesting against the Texans. And by the way, well, the Falcons, I'm sorry, the Falcons, the uh, Texans and the Colts play each other in the final game of the year. Right, so somebody will have seven losses. And the Jags have all the tiebreakers against the Colts and the Texans. So this is real simple. Win three, you win the division. But as Dewan will tell us, I'm sure, it's the NFL, man. And I don't care if the Carolina Panthers are coming here and they got two wins. If you're not ready to play and you don't play clean football, you could lose on a Sunday. Yeah, it's any given Sunday. I yeah. mean, you guys have heard that as well, too. Yeah. I mean, it, those guys get paid just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that we're, we're coming with our A game no matter who we're playing. Yeah. All right, coming up, how about uh, one of the big plays on offense, really maybe the biggest play on offense last night. The drive of the day, driven by your local Ford dealers. All right, here's a good play, Dan, right? It's a great play. <laughs> Five-play drive, and it's set up with play-action fake. Yeah, and, it, and you know what's great? It's great having Jamal Agnew back because he's going to have to help because Zay Jones got a hamstring, and Doug said last night it didn't look good, so I'm going to assume that he doesn't play, and if he's out and Kirk's out, Jamal Agnew is a guy that they're going to have to really count on, and he's capable of it. I thought he had four explosive plays last night. I tell you, I said a great play, by the way. It, it's not the drive of the day, but Daniel Thomas yeah, is a Daniel gunner. Thomas on I don't know if you saw it, Dewan, but he split two guys, went down the field, and made a tackle. It was terrific. So those are the little things that the Jags have to continue to build on and start doing. That's a make-and-play league, isn't it? You've got to make plays, and Agnew can make some plays. He's been a spark plug over the years. Yeah, he's been a huge spark plug for us. I mean, every single time he touches the ball, we're like, it's going to be something, you know, it's going to be a touchdown. So, I mean, it's just, it, he's just an electric guy for sure. Hey, when we come back here on Jags Report Live, one of the reasons we wanted to have Dewan Smoot on the show tonight is not too many Jags football players over the years that have helped start schools. That's coming up next. Wow. That story with Dewan Smoot and his family. On the way, Jags Report Live here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Good to have you here. There's Johnny. On Fox 30. And Johnny is helping out. He was at the game last night and went to school today. That's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. Oh, well, we started sunshine and rainbows for days like today. You need it. We need it need today. need a little bit of positivity, we man. We do. We got Ray Sean and Trayvon and Jamal on the board, and yeah. they all had good games last night. So Yeah, there were plays last night. Yeah, yeah. Just need more of them. Welcome back, everybody, to Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Jags report live. Brent Morton, Dan Hicken. Jaguars defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker, wherever you want to put them, Dewan Smoot. And his wife, Amari, joins us now. By the way, we haven't said that Dewan and Amari, this is the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, <laughs> thank you. I think we hadn't mentioned that yet, but congratulations. That, I mean, that's quite an honor. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. And I, I'm just happy that, you know, all my peers have, 
kind of looked at me as like an inspiration in the community. So yes. I'm, I'm just so happy. Well, that kind of goes along with this segment, actually. Yeah. Uh, you guys had a holiday toy drive today at your school. Yes. Not too many people can say, like, your school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that like today? Uh, and we'll get into the school part a little bit more, but you got uh, a lot of toys for kids around the holidays, Amari. Absolutely. It was important for us to show up this holiday season and make sure that the kids get what they need. Um, and so that's why we committed to doing the toy drive. This just took place this afternoon. You guys have had a busy day. This will, listen, this is real life stuff. That kind of brightens your day even after a tough loss last night. Yeah, definitely. Bright, brightens your day. You know, we, we love giving back. You know, smooth, as, as we can say, like we love giving back to the community. And, you know, we're right. <laughs> for sure. We're, 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 both, we're both riding off two hours of sleep, so it's been a long day, definitely, of giving back. <laughs> it really, it, listen, it, and it's a blessing in Jacksonville to have the Jaguars, and part of the reason why is because of all the things that the organization and the individuals, and this is, you've been here longer than anybody now as far as players. This is your home, your guys' home here. Yes, yes. I mean, you made the decision to stay here, right? You guys could have gone elsewhere, and, but the boss said, You're, we're staying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our kids, our kids were born here. We're from Ohio, but our kids are from Jacksonville. And so for us, we want to pour into the community, yeah. continue to watch it grow and uplift everyone that lives here. Well, this is part of your story as the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But the story goes deeper than that. For that part of it, let's bring in Action Sports Jack's Marcel Robinson. So many players that suit up for the Jacksonville Jaguars called the River City home long after their playing careers conclude. But before Dewan Smoot resigned with the Jacksonville Jaguars earlier this year, he and his wife Amari had already begun solidifying Jacksonville as their home base for years to come. Having children, uh, becoming a mom and trying to find a school that fits the requirements that I have for my family, I found it to be difficult here in Jacksonville. After pondering and thinking about it for some time, I decided to just go ahead and open my own. And thus, the LZ Academy was born, an early educational learning center with a distinguished early educational program that is catered to teaching the next generation and help them thrive. I think what makes our school different is we're bilingual and we're project focused. And so our second language here is Spanish. So what you'll get in the classroom is an English speaking teacher and a Spanish speaking teacher. So we're mending those worlds together. That way when your child hits that kindergarten level, they know how to speak at least a little bit of Spanish. I think the way the world is moving now, that's very important. It starts at the ground level, you know, starting kids young and, and teaching them all the way up. I feel like we're, we're starting it. Like I said, from the ground level and um, just kind of touching the community. Both Amari and Dewan have been together hand in hand since the early goings, and the inspiration from Dewan's journey to and through the NFL was felt by the person that walked the same journey right by his side. It's amazing to me. I mean, it really is a dream come true. And I always say, like, once I saw that dreams can come true from him making it to the league, it made it real in my mind that I can go out here and I can make things happen and it can become a reality. And I'm just really excited to see what it can bring to the city and what we can do for the families. We're just uh, just trying to put put out the word, just little by little, you know, event by event, and uh, just trying to actually show the community that we're here for the community. You know, so that's all we're doing, trying to, trying to spread the word as much as possible. The Snoots began this venture with the uncertainty of Dewan being re-signed by the Jacksonville Jaguars earlier this year. Last season, the slogan, it was always the Jags, was adopted as somewhat of a battle cry through the end of the season. In the case of the Smoot family, it was always Jacksonville. I never wanted to leave, you know, our family here, our businesses are here, obviously, you know, and uh, our kids are, you know, they feel great here. So I definitely didn't want to leave. Uh, Jacksonville is definitely, I definitely want to retire here and I want to, you know, create a community here. So I'm here to stay as long as I can. <laughs> The LZ Academy is up and running, and enrollment is also open. For more information, check out thelzacademy.com. In the studio, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jax. Yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, pretty neat. And Amari, tell us how it's going so far. Obviously, you guys just kicked this thing off, but how are the early stages of it? So this has been a long journey. It's been two years in the making. Um, so our first day of school will be January 2nd. So we're excited for that. <laughs> yep. Um, and so our preschool and daycare portion will be open. And then about eight months from now, the elementary portion will be open. Now, how, what's the plan? Like, how is it, you said preschool through what? 
Fifth grade. Fifth grade? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's exciting, man. You haven't had anything going on. Help start a school, recover from an Achilles, <laughs> play some football. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a busy last year, man. Yeah, we've been really busy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that I have somebody, you know, so special to, to do it with, you know, and um, I'm just so, oh. so happy to have her, for sure. Yeah, really good stuff. I have someone special, too. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and you're very fortunate, by the way. Uh, speaking of this special relationship, you guys made headlines a couple of years ago now with... Uh, I, I think it was your second child. Yes. Yeah, our right? daughter, Rolani. Rolani. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, you had to help come in the pinch there. Yeah. Everybody I, remembers I was, this story of Dewan helping out. Had, had to step in and catch her, you know. It was, <laughs> it, it was definitely a crazy moment. Um, we're just so happy that, you know, Alani, she, she's healthy, she's big, you know, and she's, she's full of life, you know. It's just great. How much did people remind you about? I mean, everybody saw that story at the time a couple of years ago. Did you get... You, she get asked about quite a bit? Yeah, we still get stopped, and you're like, wait, you're the one that had the baby. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> right, you got a couple. How are the kids doing? Oh, they're doing good, getting big. We're potty training Alani now, and Amir, <laughs> our son, he's so smart, and the best big brother. The best big brother. All right, good times, man. Congratulations good times. on uh, everything. Hey, the only thing to make it a little bit better toward the end of this season is get a few more wins. Yes. Well, life is good. Three more. Three more. Three more, Three more wins. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe a few more after that. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, uh, we'll have a little bit more with Dewan Smoot. Thanks uh, to Dewan and Amari for joining us here tonight. Jags Report Live. And it's on to Tampa on oh Christmas boy. Eve. That's the next assignment for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll be back live on Fox 30 from Sneakers and Jack's Beat. Jags, Jags Report Live, coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. I mean, if you really love and you really, you, you, you really believe in the person next to you, when that person doesn't do what his job's supposed to do, let that person know. As soon as you see it, you address it. I think this week we've held a lot of people accountable. I hear you, Josh Allen. I do it every single night. <laughs> <laughs> that is Josh Allen. Jaguars uh, do hold each other accountable. That's one beautiful thing about the NFL. There's no business right. that holds uh, each other accountable like the NFL. They have to all sit there and watch that film from last night. Welcome back to Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Jags Report Live, and good to have Dewan Smoot. Yes. And his wife, Amari, with us here tonight on Jags Report Live. Fantastic story. The Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back, Brent Morton, Dan Hicken. And then let's have, give everybody an update and continue to catch him up to speed on Trevor Lawrence in concussion protocol. And really what that means is we don't know much, but neither do the Jacksonville Jaguars. No. This is going to play out for the remainder of the week. And not every player, Dan, makes it back for the next game. In fact, more have missed the following game than actually played. Yeah, there's certain target dates that you have to make certain. There's five steps in all to this process, and you better pass at least one of the steps each day and be trending towards getting back to playing. And ultimately, you have to kind of go through some football activities. I know it's different in high schools, but like I had a son who had a concussion in high school playing football, and he had to pass, go back and pass his baseline test again. So they're real careful with it, and they should be. And, and, and they do a good job. They're doing the best they can. There's a lot of unanswered questions about that data still. Well, so. and this has been enhanced, by the way, ever since Tua last year and yes. everything that went on, which is right uh, by the NFL, but it'll be one of the keys to the game, getting Trevor back. Your keys to the game, sponsored by Greenway Kia. Yeah, there you see he's on the bottom of that list, and you know, you might not like the way he played in the football game last night, but you also want him playing on Sunday yeah, against gonna, the Tampa Bay He's going to bounce back. Look, you got to shake Baker Mayfield because Baker Mayfield had a perfect rating yesterday up at Lambeau Field, the first ever do something like that. He was terrific. He threw for 380 yards, four touchdowns. They got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. The Jags are going to have their hands full. They're going to have to have another outstanding defensive effort on Sunday to win down there in Tampa. Yeah, fast start, too. When the Jags have won football games this year, it feels like they're in the lead in the first half. Plus, you're on the road. You know, you don't, you don't want to get behind on the road. Yeah, and then they've tough. lost three in a row. They need something good to happen yeah. early in that yeah. football game. And maybe DeJuan Smoot can help that happen. He's here with us at Jags Report Live, signing some autographs, taking some pictures. And as we bring uh, DeJuan back in, as he's signing, hey, this Tampa Bay team is tough, uh, especially from a defensive perspective, DeJuan. On. There's a lot to cover out there, and Baker Mayfield's been playing pretty good football. What's your take on the Bucks so far? Um, I mean, ba Baker's all, he's always played good football at the end of the day. I mean, 
we, we, know, we, we know he's a big, it's going to be a big challenge this week. So, I mean, the number one thing for us, you know, we, we watch a little bit of film. We got to stop the run so we can go ahead and have yes. fun. You know, so we, so we can go ahead and uh, show off our pass rush, how me, Trey, and Josh uh, like to get down. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's the goal every single week. Yeah, and you have done that most of the year. I think Tampa has one guy who may be one of the most underrated players in the NFL, and that's Mike Evans. Mm -hmm. Every year of his career, 10 years in the NFL, he has had a 1,000-yard season. Wow. He is a Hall of Famer in my mind. Terrific, and he's a tough guy to cover because he's fast and he's big and tall, and you got, you got to get bodies on that guy too, huh? For sure, and I, I'm, I mean, I, I believe that one of, one of our guys can, you know, kind of bring that physicality and, you yep. know, Rayshon, I feel like, you know, he, he's going to be ready for the matchup and we, we got some guys for him as well too. Yeah, we'll see if the Jags get healthy with Andre Sisco and Tyson yes. Campbell as well. Hey, a little lighter moment. It is a week from Christmas. Secret Santa's inside the locker room. You got some Christmas shopping to do for the guys. How's that work? For, well, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Sorry, I said that one more time. <laughs> how, does, how does it work around Christmas time inside that locker room? You do Secret Santa. You got to yes. get anybody gifts. Yes, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not going to tell who it is yet. But <laughs> I got. I got two of the guys. Some special gifts. Some. Some. Some tech stuff. So. All right. Stay tuned. Good I deal. noticed Stay Trevor tuned. got the fellas some golf carts. The offensive lineman. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. Well, like we said, Josh Allen will be buying everybody gifts yeah. after this offseason. <laughs> yeah, Go sure. on. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate hanging out with the fans as well uh, here on this uh, Monday night. Jags get ready to take on the Bucks. Jags play the Bucks. Take a look at the rest of the schedule, Dan, mm -hmm. for the uh, AFC South. And the Jags actually have the easiest schedule. Uh, combined 14-28 and 28 record. The Indianapolis Colts, it's, I think, 22, 21 and 21, and the yeah. Texans are 22 and 20. But they play each other down the stretch. So it's hard to predict the NFL. Uh, these somebody's going to lose somewhere, I mean, but the, it would – behoove the Jags at this point to win their next three football games, and that way it would remove any doubt, make them AFC South champions for the second straight year. Yeah, and uh, that And would I think be that's the important, Brent. I think we get lost. There's a lot, little bit of a defeated attitude. I think it's important for this football team, this organization, to do something that they haven't done since 98 and 99, and that's go to the postseason two straight years. Think about that. It's 2023, man. It's been a, you got to remove the losing out of this organization. you got to change, and they're slowly doing it but they got to change that dna man yeah and on top of that dan that would be sustained winning that's what that is right. year after right. year and that puts you on a good path with doug peterson trevor lawrence and everybody else i agree with you making the playoffs winning record it's important two things that haven't happened in a long time around here when we come back we go to the bar oh i need a drink we just want the food and that's what we get <laughs> here on jags report live when we come back, we talk a little bit more about Trevor Lawrence and his supporting cast. Juan Smoot here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Good to have him out. And good to have you with us on Fox 30. This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive entry law firm of the Jaguars. I don't think anybody in the building is worried about it slipping away. We, we know what we got to do. Like I said, we got to take it one game at a time still. But, like, I'm going to keep saying that the urgency just got to pick up. And there's one thing about the NFL that we've learned. The way they think inside the building is not the way they think out, we think outside the building. So yeah. they will be locked in this one game at a time, and that's a good thing right now in Jacksonville. 24-hour rule and see you. On to Tampa Bay. When we, welcome back, everybody. Jags Report Live, sneakers in Jack's Beach. And I missed the bar last week. You did? You didn't yeah. come out to the bar? I didn't do by the yourself? bar. I was by myself. Look I at onion look, rings today. Look like, oh, I, think. Look I love onion rings. I mean, I love. Do you really? Love onion rings. Yeah, so I've had about three different folks in here, the fine folks that come out to Sneakers in Jack's Beach, ask me how my ACL and meniscus is. I didn't say ACL. I said meniscus because you were here last Monday. I had to tough it out. I'm like the... I'm like the Trevor Lawrence of Jags Report Live. I show <laughs> you up have every a week. Going. You were nowhere to be found. <laughs> yes. What happened? <laughs> I'm healthy, by the way. <laughs> Dan made that up. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Or actually, either that or I recover quickly. Actually, it was a lie. <laughs> it was a flat-out lie. It was a flat-out lie. About the meniscus. Yeah. Brent Martin, Dan Hicken. These and, are uh, terrific, by the what's way. What's on the menu aside from onion rings? And it is... I love onion rings. They're so good. Why can't the Jags win at home? Five losses. I said this, and I asked Elias Sports Bureau. They didn't answer me. Has a team ever lost five home games in a season and won their division or made it to the playoffs? What a crazy year. Yes, yeah, it's, it, it's disappointing on a lot of levels. And look, they've had some tough games at home. Absolutely, okay? yeah. But 
But the crowds have been terrific. Prime time was awesome. I thought last night it was just a beautiful atmosphere. It was like that on Monday night as well. And they just haven't been able to win these football games. And nobody knows why. We can try and dissect. There's, they can look. It's not distractions. It's not this. It's not that. You know, it's just one of those. I don't know if they just. It's a weird it's thing. It's karma. It's a, from last year, all the comebacks last year. Maybe it's evening out. I don't know, but it's been tough. Yeah, maybe a little bad luck mixed in there. Tough stretch of the schedule right. at home, like you mentioned, when injuries hit. And poor play. Let's be honest. Haven't played well enough to win. I just ate an entire onion ring and put it in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that we was can very tell. rude. We can tell. Yeah, this whole thing is probably uh, somewhat rude of a segment, but it's awesome. We love it, and you're eating, and you're happy. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jags fans might not be happy heading into the off season if things go this way. Are the Jags a few tweaks away from really being a Super Bowl contender, or are we looking at a potential overhaul this off season? No, I don't think we're looking at an overhaul. But I mean, truth be told they got to get more help from a lot of the younger guys. I mean, guys got to help out. you got a franchise quarterback. He had a terrible game last night. Again, we've said this over and over again. But the guy is going to be fine. He's a very good quarterback. He's very talented. I think he's a kid who's going to continue to to get better. So, okay, what do you have with him? So I'm not going to break down every position, but there is a need at certain positions here. And they needed the guys. You know, Brenton Strange unfortunately got injured, yeah, right? Yeah, he's missed Tank the last Bigsby's three games. had a tough year. The fourth-round pick hasn't played at all this year. So you can go down the line here. And, and, and you didn't get enough from the draft, and you didn't go help the D-line at all, you know, in free agency. So I think you got to be a little bit more active this offseason. They did uh, go get a kicker and replace yeah. their other kicker, yeah. and they got a big leg, and the guy had been awesome. So but good. he's missed four out of his last five kicks, Dan. Yeah. And we have a kicker problem again in Jacksonville. I don't think so. I, don't, I think Brandon McManus is going to be fine. I think he's a good kicker. He's just hit a little bit of a slump. It's unfortunate. You can't miss kicks. I think you pointed out the ones that he missed last over the four of the last five are like 55, 50, 48. Again, you got to make them, but it is what it is. Hey, he makes the one against Cincinnati, you win the football game. Yeah, I know. And maybe he changed a little bit of the game yesterday if you make one or two of them. Maybe one you more. You keep eating. All right. You're fine. Jacksonville hopefully will be. And what about the defense? When we come back, more on this Jacksonville Jaguars football team. We are live at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Yeah. On Fox 30, Jags getting set to play Tampa Bay Christmas Eve. No holiday around here. It's a work day for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. Yeah, we want to win. I mean, you can't you can't win with losing efforts, and that wasn't a winning effort. So just get it right. As soon as we get one, we're going to roll. I just want to get it right. Well, there you go. That from Foyer Lewican. I mean, winning football. Listen, it's a play. You got to make plays. You got to make plays to win. It's as simple as that. Brent Morton along with Dan Hickam. Jags report live. Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Good to have Dewan Smoot and his wife Amari with us tonight earlier on the show. And uh, here's the deal, Dan. Mm -hmm. I think the Jags are in okay shape because of Doug Peterson. I think Doug has pushed a lot of the right buttons. I think this is time for Doug this week to find the right buttons to push to get this team back on track. They won't panic because of Doug, but at least they've put themselves in a position to have this slide and still have a chance. Well, look, last year he pushed every button correctly. All right, this year it's going to be interesting. He, they need him now more than ever. Yeah. He needs to be the voice of you know, steady, let's go, but we got to play better. we got to fix these things. We've had these, like I said, self-inflicted wounds. The last three weeks have just been over the top, man. We cannot keep having these, man. So if they don't fix that, they're not going to go anywhere. If they do fix it, they're talented enough to win the South Division. His leadership, they're going to have to rely on. And you just got to get in the dance, playing some of your best football, being a confident team, and you never know what but happens. But you don't, but 0-3 in December is not a good feeling. No. I, I can tell you this, though. You could tell Doug, he's frustrated with it, too. Yeah. It's almost like he's out of some answers. Well, I mean, last night, I mean, he, in his press conference, I thought, you know, pointed about taking care of the football, and that's a Trevor Lawrence problem, man. The fumbles, it just got to stop. He's just got to learn to eat it at times. Well, you mentioned Tampa Bay Bucks offense is pretty good. They'll need some tackling prowess on Sunday in Tampa. Your Tackle Tracker, sponsored by IHRS, tackling hair loss. Hey, we had a new guy at the top last night. Do we? 
I'll tell you what, Dewey has been a very productive Jacksonville Jaguar player, hasn't he? And he had, great flop. He had a great flop last night. I mean, he, he, got, a, he got us a penalty, and unfortunately, the next play, Baltimore uh, hit a touchdown. Yeah, That's yeah. the same thing. I mean, Dewey made a great play and, 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 and got the penalty, and then it didn't work. But heck of a game for Dewey last night. Yeah, Foye Lewican heading over 150 tackles once wow. again and right on the cusp of leading the league for a third consecutive season. When we come back... yes. I hope Aspen did better than the Jags the last week. She's been riding a losing streak. Controversial uh, segment coming up with Aspen. Oh, apparently. really? Yeah, apparently. Fix is in? Apparently, well, no, but apparently folks down at the station aren't real happy with the dog running oh, around. I'm breaking at, news might be Burrish coming back on Jags in. Report Live on I don't Fox know. 30. Yeah. I have no idea what this is all about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. You know, we have the right mindset going into these games. Uh, the results just aren't showing up. The complimentary football we had in the middle of our season is just out the window. we got to find a way to get that back. Uh, that guy's a stud. Evan Ingram now with 88 catches, and he's that mentality that they need and have a lot in the locker room when it comes to leadership as they try to get this thing right. Brent Martin, Dan Hicken, and Aspen. Aspen. Time to ask Aspen. Aspen, help us, please. It's time for Ask Aspen. Sponsored by Subaru of Jacksonville on Atlantic. The right choice for your next vehicle. Uh, the fix was in. Yeah. Seems like. Nice pick by Aspen. Where did Aspen have the problem with the uh, situation that led to the email at the station? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe in our office? I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> Inner office <laughs> stuff? Probably, keep, keep, yeah. it, keep it between yeah, us? Yeah, probably should. All right. HR might be calling. Uh, Shag Social coming up this Friday, of course, heading into the holiday weekend. They'll get you set uh, as the Aspen tracker hits, hopefully, the 500 mark. Yes. Jags have a better record than Aspen. Amen. I can tell you that. Jags social coming up 7.30 on uh, Fox 30, by the way. All right, man. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Please. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Dewan Smoot and his family for their toy drive. Big John Henderson's been having his toy drive out here at Sneakers. He does a great job. Big John not feeling the best lately, so our thoughts and prayers are with our friend, the former Jaguar great. Yeah, and uh, Aaron Beasley will have trivia out here tomorrow night at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. As we say goodnight, you can drop off a toy here at Sneakers in Jack's Beach for that John Henderson toy drive. And uh, Look at the toys. Maybe that's Aspen's replacement. <laughs>